In what areas of your life do you find yourself waiting and why? This week, we talk about ways waiting could be holding you back and how to spark yourself into action. Hola, listeners. Thank Hola. you for checking for Kylie's Couch, episode 160 out here. Hey, gang. Um, I feel like 100 seemed like, wow, we hit 100. And now I feel like it's kind of moving <laughs> slow. Like, So we haven't done 600 episodes yet? <laughs> <laughs> feel like we at 660 right now. Right. It, it does feel like that. Um, but, you know, we still invite you all to leave comments all over. Give us a call. Hit us up individually. Let us know if there's any thoughts you have about uh, a topic you want us to talk about, if you have a guest or if you want to be a guest, um, we're always open to that feedback from you all. So please continue to engage with us. Yeah, I always appreciate that. Um, I thought it was dope. I was at some event, like probably a couple weeks ago, and somebody was like, you're from Carly's Couch. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been listening to y'all since I moved to L.A., and it was like really cool to hear. So please share feedback. Um, I always appreciate that. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, we appreciate you guys paying attention. Um, this week, I think the last, I don't even remember what the second from last one was, but the last few, I think we kind of are talking about, uh, how you act in making sure that you're honoring yourself and like your own decisions and, you know, what you want to do. And I think today also falls in line with that, where I feel like a lot of times, um, you know, we're kind of holding ourselves back and I... That was my first thought in researching this. So I was thinking like, hmm, you know, what are ways that we kind of hold ourselves back? And so I was looking up some stuff. And one thing that I kept seeing over and over is a lot of responses around waiting. Um, and so then I thought, hmm, we could probably just do a, a conversation around waiting, what in what places we're waiting, like identifying that. Because sometimes maybe you don't even think about it that way until you get called out. Mm -hmm. Um and then, like, what to do to get out of that. I think that a lot of times we're held back because, it's like, you know, you're just waiting for something else instead of you kind of being on the offense in your life. So um, we're going to talk about that and taking action this week. So what – do you find yourself waiting in any areas of your life? Um, probably – how maybe we should talk about how like how can you identify exactly yeah. where where you would oh and you know what I think a good exercise on how to identify if you're waiting for something is to write a list of the things that you want so Ooh. I would say like in relationships like what are the things you want and maybe you're like waiting for the perfect person maybe you're waiting for a person you're talking to to get right maybe you're waiting for you to be better so you can attract somebody um, when it comes to work. It's like, all right, what are the things you want? Maybe you really want to start this or that. And it's like, so are you waiting for that? Um, yourself, like, maybe it might be about losing weight. It might be about just I want to do more of a thing. I want to do more outdoor activity. I want to, you know, hang out with my friends more. What are the things that you want? Like, really think about the things that you want. And now when you look at that list, it's like, oh, am I waiting to do these? Because probably you don't have to. Um, I think that would be a good way to identify that. I started in my notes on my phone a things to do list just because I would get random ideas like watching movies or just, you know, with whatever conversations. And I would think like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. And I was like, what am I waiting for? Because sometimes you just kind of think about it, but then you don't really remember it or you don't prioritize it to like, you know, go do it right then or go Google it or find a ticket or whatever at that moment. But in making a list, I realized how many of the things I could easily just kind of check off. Um, and then I just started doing them and started working my way down that list. So there can be, you know, incredible things. There can be easier things. But I think the first step is really being clear about what are the things that you want. And so going back to your question about am I waiting for anything, um, I may be waiting a little bit with um, – Mm. <laughs> I don't know. To a degree, you might be waiting for things with relationships. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I really don't be waiting that much, though. I'll be out of here. Same. Uh, like, as far as, like, if I want to do something, I unless it's, like, a money thing, I'm, like, I'm pretty much out. Um, but sometimes there's even the things of, like, the growth of your business. Or, you know, it may look like, oh, man, I'm, I'm doing my thing. But then there's reasons why I might be like, oh, wait a minute, let me not, you know, Go, go too minute. hard um, because it's like, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to be ready for this. Actually, and I have said that recently where it's like, dang, I don't know if I can 
you know, how much more can we take on? Or maybe I need to focus and get this thing right first. And those are all examples of waiting. So absolutely, I guess there's different places in my life where I am waiting. What about you? Yeah, um, I, I'm also a person who, who disacts. I typically do things. Um, so I'm thinking about, told me back it's like there's a couple of life transitions like in business wise like things that I want to do and I haven't yet and I, now I'm sitting here like well why haven't I done them yet because I am the person that just does the thing like oh I decided to do this I'm gonna go do it I'm gonna want to get this done like I don't outside of money things like you said for my bucket list it's not really things that I wait on like I don't wait on people to go to restaurants that I want to go to like if I want to try them out by myself and do different things I'm gonna very Um, small level but I think there are so many ways that people can be waiting in things and not be thinking about it Mm -hmm. so it's like if it's like for a business like you know making a business decision you might be waiting for a validation or for someone to like yeah that's a great idea you know to give you some confidence or something to move forward like I think that's probably a huge one Mm -hmm. I'm in some other places in life where we may be waiting um, is with a partner. So sometimes you might be waiting for a partner to take a particular action, to change, um, to make some kind of decision about what are y'all doing. And it's like, or you can move forward in the way that you need to move forward to be more open to maybe the right person or a different person or um, or in a place where you're not going to get hurt because you're actually also living your life while they're trying to figure out what they're doing too. Like, you don't have to be waiting. And I think that causes if it's around another person, a lot of resentment Mm -hmm. because quite frankly, you're not putting yourself first in that position. If there is not a commitment first, let's for example, or if there's something where it's like, you know, we enjoy each other, but it's not quite all that, but you're acting like it's all that. And then you're, you're setting yourself up. It's like, are you ready to go on another date and, you know, feel like you got some freedom and you never know who else you might meet. So it's like, don't wait for another person for sure. Yeah, or for anybody's approval to change or do something that you want or go after like those things that you say that you want to do. Like you don't have you don't need that from anybody else. And you don't need to wait for permission either to do a thing. Um, even as adults, sometimes I feel like we can be waiting for permission from like parents or guardian type people. You know, it's like, oh, man, you don't really need what Carly said earlier about approval or permission uh, to do what you want to do. If you want to quit a job, if you want to go down a different path. Um, if you want to give all your things away and be a super minimalist or like whatever, you know, sometimes I, I don't know about you. Sometimes I get these random thoughts. It's like, I don't even want to like do any of this, you know, it's just like, yes. Oh, so just switch it up. Um, I think you don't have to wait. Another one is like feeling like you're not where you're supposed to be yet. So you can't do certain things. So it's like, man, I've always, let's say you always wanted to live in another country, you know, like, what are you waiting mm-hmm. for? Oh, I got to get this money right. I got to, you know, grow a little bit more in myself. Like, I have these emotions. I want to do all these things. And it's like, okay, cool. Some of that might be true, especially the money thing. But it's like, how long do you let yourself have these excuses before you actually do what it is that you want to do? Yeah, and also consider, sorry, I'm like over here dancing with the mic. Also consider, too, that waiting is not taking any action. So I might be like, man, I think I want to live abroad for a month. And it's different to not to just say that and not do anything. And it's one thing to like start looking to see how much two spots cost. Mm-hmm. You're probably gonna realize they're like half what you pay now. And to start putting money aside or start uh, doing the things you need to do to prepare and like or set a date. You know what I mean? Like it's still there's still forward movement. And there's still steps. Um, then that's not waiting because sometimes there is things that you need to get together in order to do a thing or to open a new business or to do whatever. But to wait is in action. So I just wanted to clarify that too. Yeah. So you can still like take little steps, even if it's not quite exactly where you want it to be yet. Another place you could be waiting is waiting for yourself. You might be waiting for emotions to pass. Like, um, I got to get over this anger or I got to get over particular feelings before, uh, you can forgive a person or before you can move on yeah, to something in else. Relationship or- yeah. And it's like, actually you can kind of, Sometimes, like, moving forward is the way through with a lot of things. And so to sit and wait for yourself to not care about somebody anymore or to get over a thing, it's like, nah, sometimes you just need to fill the space or or move forward um, and you'll get to that space where you'll be okay. Yeah, and it's not saying just, like, as soon as y'all break up, fill that spot with somebody else, baby, heal. But also, (laughs) don't just wait for the 
quote unquote perfect person is like you might not even you might have this idea of a person in your head but if you don't date you don't know that you don't actually like the thing you thought you liked until you actually mm-hmm. date so you got to figure it out so it's like taking steps not telling you to marry everybody but take steps mm-hmm. um so now we're gonna let's break down a few of these kind of things you may be waiting for or like what's going on so with waiting for permission from others and you may not think you're waiting for permission but to carly's point it's like man nobody's really said like that's a good idea to me or nobody's kind of validated your idea um and when you're waiting for permission that signifies like you need approval from other people so in your head you've created a story that said oh well if other people approve this then i might be on the right path um, so you need that extra outside validation to let you know, okay, like I'm moving the right direction. And to do that, it's almost telling yourself like what I want or what I'm thinking isn't enough of a, a justification, right? Um, but it's your life. So it's like, hey, if that's what you're thinking and that's what's on your mind, that's okay. That's like all you need to to at least move forward and explore something. Mm-hmm. And I think so many times people – get caught up in making the right or wrong decision and, you know, waiting for this. And it's like, you just have to make a decision and like life just follows with that. Um, Another one is not just waiting for approval, but like being stuck and paralyzed because of other people's comments or like lack of reaction. It's like, Oh, I'm gonna start this business and I'm gonna do this. And then it, nobody says anything. Yeah, or nobody like, oh, big okay. up your, oh, I'll, I'll put you a little bit. Okay. Like, cool. Oh damn. Yeah, maybe maybe that's not a good idea <laughs> or that. And a lot of times it's people projecting their fear and their insecurities and their things on you too. So it's like anytime you're so affected by other people's things that you don't move forward or take action for yourself, that's a sign you probably waiting on something. Yeah. And that's not even saying that they're hating or whatever either because you know what's going on with them is going on with them because i have instances where i can see in somebody's eyes like they're waiting for you to like say something or you know acknowledge something and it's just like okay like you could tell they're like oh they didn't say anything about me (laughs) and it's like girl like i need you to be okay without that like and then that that feels like it becomes your responsibility too so it's like yo you don't put the responsibility on other people to push you in the direction that's you know waiting for permission so just go with it and go with what you're thinking is a good idea good sign but it is nice of course to talk to your friends and you know get kind of some confirmation and and even with business in general one of the steps to that is getting uh validation of your idea um and that can be through surveys or through talking people etc it don't got to be you know that one friend that you're like oh man i need their approval or else like this is not good like it doesn't have to be that so um there's other ways to do that Mm -hmm. i hear people a lot of times talking about waiting for a sign for things too um and uh i remember this one story where the guy was like yeah my friend was like you know i kind of want to come out but I'm, i'm like waiting for a sign and he's like well why isn't talking to me right now about that you want to come out a sign (laughs) like so it's like we're picking and choosing like what we want to be a sign and it's like well whatever sign you're looking for really signifies what you want to be doing anyway Mm -hmm. so like just do that thing um and plus like uncertainty is part of the process and so you don't need permission you don't need a sign to show you what to do like you're going to be uncertain so at least go with what you feel And I don't think you can ever go wrong whenever you're listening to yourself and honoring yourself. You have to do what's best for you and living to your own standards, living to what it is that you want. And sometimes that's difficult to tune in and figure out what do you need? What do I actually want? And come into grips with that. But that's the part of the self-work. It's like stop waiting for others to tell you that it's okay to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Another huge thing that we wait for is the right time. Man. Right in quotation marks because it's never the right time. But I, f- I feel like that's so cliche. We hear it all the time, but, like, it's so true. Like, it's never the right time. There's It's always some shit going on. Man. It's always, like, the, you could, like, let me just chill instead. Like, it's always something, right? Um, I think there are, like, very good opportune windows of things where you're like, ooh. Like, I felt like that before. Where it's like, yo, I know this is the time. This must be the lined up time to start or do this thing because this is just a great opportunity to slide into it. But it's never, I don't really think, like, I've ever been like, man, I'm ready for the right time. But I do notice where I use excuses about, like we said earlier, like certain things not being ready or uh, I feel like I need to do a little more. So if you find yourself saying, yeah, I want to I wanna learn, learn a little bit more about that first or I want to practice this a little more, get my skills up in that a little bit more, um, and wait for a better environment, wait for the, for the interest rates to go down. Um, all of those are delay tactics. So that's you waiting for the right time. So you may not be saying, I'm waiting for the right time, 
But in that's doing all saying. of those things, that's what you're saying. You're waiting for a right time. And the only right time is right now. Only by starting whatever it is that you're thinking about will you be able to figure out, like, oh, I actually do need to learn a little bit more about how to develop a mm-hmm. website. Or, damn, maybe I do need to go see a therapist because this relationship is getting tough. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, but you don't know until you're in the throes of it because you can sit around and romanticize what it's like to start a business, to move to a different country, to go to the gym, to write that business plan. But until you actually start doing, like, that's the best way to learn. That's the best way to know what it is that you need. And you might find out that it was right and it was what you wanted or that it wasn't. But you won't know until you do it. So why are you waiting? Yeah, I think that was a, one of the first blog posts I wrote on my personal website when I made my website because I kept saying forever, like, oh, I should just do my own personal website so I can, if I do want to write about something or, you know, just have a place to talk about all the different things going on with me. And I put off making it for so long. And then the day I just sat down and started doing it, I literally did the whole site in like 25 minutes. And then I was like, oh, the first post was like, yeah, I was just doing all this thinking about it and trying to plan it and what's the pages going to be. And it's like once I just sat down and did it, it was like I just all I had to do was sit down and do it. And then in doing it, I saw like, oh, yeah, this needs to be this. I should add this. Um, so, yeah, you got to get started because you'll never feel ready. That's another thing, too. We I think we wait for feelings like, oh, wait, wait for this to feel good. It's never going to feel good to, like, get ready to start working out. It's never going to feel mm-hmm. ready to, like, start doing anything that may be a risk. Um, you're never going to feel ready. And so we have to distance this idea of being ready with like being 100% prepared or, um, you know, feeling 100% confident in this. Because being a human is like, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know everything. And you can still be ready, if that makes sense. Like, you're not going to be ready in that sense of everything being perfect because it never will be. So again, we're using that almost as like this tactic to just not really get started. Man, and I actually learned this term from you, but action faking. Um, so saying I'm almost I'm gonna wait till I'm ready, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But also, um, this next topic of things that we wait on like really speaks to me because I've noticed myself doing it. Action faking when mm-hmm. you're overly focused on planning, it's okay, I'm gonna start this, and you start making lists and you start feeling good and you start having these plans, you might even create stuff, but there's no execution. You're literally just making yourself feel good by acting like you're going to do a thing, but you just have the list and the to-do list and the plans, but you're not actually doing it. Yeah, and if it's one thing I'm going to do, baby, I'm going to plan some shit out. It's going to be a (laughs) clean plan, and then you're like, oh. And I've been seeing this recently, like, in our work, and which is, like, really pissing me off because I'm like, dang, like, got all this team, and we're doing all this stuff, but, like, how is there not the executions where it's, like, falling off? It's like you're doing all this planning and getting everything all together, And then the execution will miss. And it's like, okay, so we need to focus on that. And, like, at the end of the day, if you're not getting it executed, you're not doing anything. Like, you're really wasting your time. And so your first step um, is the most important one. So it may be imperfect. It may not be uh, 100% right. But that's much more useful than sitting here and planning and planning and making a calendar and making a list of this and a list of that. Um, doing studying and all of those things because sometimes that first step changes all the rest of the plans. Um, sometimes when we focus more on the planning, it's just like you're never getting it done. So focus more on the acting than the planning. And that made me, when I read that, made me think about an exercise. Where I'm like, okay, in the different parts of my life, let me think about like, what are my plans? Because I do have, like I literally have plans. Like I, I'll write stuff, you know, all these things, right? So it's like, think about how much how much time in my week do I spend on planning? And then how much time do I actually spend on the execution? So I was thinking to uh, kind of look at that for maybe a week or a few days to see, am I spending more time trying to come up with strategy? Or it's like, sometimes it's like you just need to do it to get actual results instead of feeling like you're preparing to get results. Or um, it's almost like psyching your mind out that you're doing something. And I think it also goes hand in hand with, uh, busyness versus being productive mm-hmm. where it's like, Oh, we just want to feel like we're doing something, but you're not actually moving the needle and what's important. So, uh, we'll get tired and feel like, Oh man, something's not working. And it's almost like we are validating that this isn't the right thing or this is what we should do, but you're not actually taking the action you really need to be taking. So I challenge you to also look at that this week for sure. Absolutely. I mean, and there's a million reasons why, you know, we do this. You could be fearful. You could be 
you know, you don't want to fail. You don't want to get rejected, be judged. You're not confident in yourself. You're, you know, there's so many reasons. So it's not like we're saying this is necessarily easy, but taking that first step is the most important thing. And that's really how you learn stuff. Then you also have to let go of that fear of failure. Like you're going to fuck up. You're going to miss the mark on some things. You're not going to know the answers to stuff, but like being willing to enjoy the process would take a lot of that pressure off and probably ease up that tension. So you can actually just start taking actions because you're going Mm -hmm. to miss step and that is okay I think also maybe we wait sometimes because we don't want to feel embarrassed or like if something Mm -hmm. doesn't work out like you don't want to be like oh man but I think that also comes with like us over announcing things sometimes Mm -hmm. um so maybe one thing you can wait to do is to talk about the thing or like to to publicize it in a certain way um and that's comes with being like more of a like a silent assassin with it so don't wait on the plans or the action that you want to do um, but you don't have to be like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm thinking about starting this whole new thing or I'm starting a nonprofit where we're doing X, Y, Z. And you haven't, you know, you ain't even got you a, a IRS number or nothing yet. And it's like, yo, just do the things. If you focus more on doing the things, then you'll see like what you need. Then you see who I need to connect with and you see like, all right, what does my branding need to be? And, and just move forward, just move forward um, a little bit more silently. But you don't have to wait for people to validate you getting started. Um, but I think sometimes we do set ourselves up for disappointment if we are very um, vocal about some of these things. Like, even with, with I want to go away for a month or something, like, try, like, not really talking about the stuff and just actually just doing the thing. Like, just pop up in Finland and be like, oh. And I think, so let's say you're on the opposite side and you have been taking actions and you built the website and you're building a business and you find yourself not launching it and making excuses and you're waiting to actually release a thing. Cause that's where I was with the mm-hmm. whole butters. Me cause, too. I, Cause I mean, I was there for, I mean, I've been working on things for dang near a year. They were done, had the labels, but I was like, no, nah, my website's not perfect. Haven't done this. Don't need this. So I just did the step. I was like, you know what? Let me just make an announcement. Cause I haven't talked about it at all. Let me make an announcement and hold mm-hmm. myself accountable. Mm-hmm. I was like, Hey y'all, I'm launching on Wednesday. Everybody's like, wait, what? And by Wednesday I had to make sure all my shit got done. Yeah. Yeah. So you sometimes if you find yourself, yourself like actually doing actions, force yourself to take that next step and really do the thing, yeah. not just doing all the work behind the scenes, but actually do the thing, do the damn thing. Yeah, uh, I was in the same place with that daggone like revamp announcement. But also it was like, OK, you can't talk about things while it's in plans. But mm-hmm. once you have it done, it's like what's nothing's holding back announcing something or just like releasing it besides you just need to make sure it's it's set to publish and you know even if it's just to a few people right there's always more you can be doing there's always more but even from that like those actions like yes carly sold product or i finally like put out you know the information about the revamp yes i've had way more convo and even a couple more clients like in conversations since then um so it's like yo you don't have to necessarily be shooting uh, for perfection and which goes in line with a lot of the topics that we have as well so you might be waiting for things to be perfect that's waiting for the right time so I think most of the excuses or most of the reasons we wait do really fall into those categories of like trying to be ready or trying to have the perfect right timing or waiting for permission or validation from somebody else and so think about the places where you're waiting for something um, and identify like which one of those areas is kind of like the one that's dominating and why and then challenge yourself to start taking steps towards it or to give yourself a date to actually launch the thing or do the thing, um, just depending on where you are with it. But no, anytime you're waiting, like it takes you out of the driver's seat of your life. You have to own your power and like take that control and then move forward. Because I was like, what what are you waiting for? Yes. Um, I agree. So no more waiting. Stop waiting. Stop waiting for that man. Stop waiting for that girl. Stop waiting for your job, your boss to promote you. Write a letter like, hey, I need to do the X, Y, Z. I need to negotiate. Like, just make a move and just see what happens. Yeah, but I say stop waiting for the perfect time. And stop waiting for yourself to be perfect because neither will ever happen. Yeah, sure <laughs> And won't. I think that that's big. Um, This week's question of the week, because I was trying to be Lexi to it. <laughs> so... What is something you thought was going to be amazing, but it actually turned out pretty rough or horrible? Horrible? I'm going to say horrible is a strong uh, word. That's what I said, rough. Dang. Um, I would say, so, I'm going to make this a little more broad, just so I'm not, like, in all my business. Mm-hmm. But um, I think... Um, the expectations 
and like the having the, your weight of what's going to make you feel good into like a a win or like an action. So I like accomplished something, but then it's like I felt kind of worse after I accomplished mm. it. And I thought like, oh man, this is great. And even and like it is great, but also it's like I was like, dang, this and I don't know, this don't feel like how I thought it was going to feel or you know, it can kind of come with more stress when you accomplish something or when you've achieved something. Um, and so you really start to realize, or I have really realized, like, oh, I see why, well, you know, when people say, hey, don't wrap up how you feel into the accomplishment. Because really, you know, what has been driving you a lot of the times is um, trying to get a thing, like working towards the thing, and that's cool. And so when you get it, you're, it's like you thought that was going to make you feel a certain way, and just even thinking that is like that brings your dopamine way down. Mm-hmm. Um, I was listening to some podcast episode where they were talking about um, making sure you separate separate the two, like separate the accomplishments. And it was something else they were talking about as far as what makes, what keeps you happy or makes you feel good is the working towards. And so always kind of having that um, – mentality of like the things you're working towards you get it your, your dopamine kind of drops but then he's like that's why you always realize it's like all right now you think about the next level or the next whatever thing um and to always kind of have that focus on um working towards a thing is really what kind of keeps you more driven than actually just once you get a thing so for me i would say it's like uh putting my What's, what am I trying to say? Like trying to putting my, because I wouldn't say happiness in general, but like thinking that an achievement is going to make you feel good. And then it's like, oh, this doesn't even feel good at all. And you kind of feel worse because it doesn't feel what you thought it was going to feel like. Yeah. And then you start to question yourself. I um, appreciate. I didn't say all that. <laughs> what? <laughs> said, Go ahead. Said, then you start to question yourself. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. <laughs> but I didn't say that though. I would uh, I don't know if I was questioning myself, well, but I was I'm saying, like, oh, so, this is what? Well, I'm saying, so, like, you accomplished a thing. Or, like, yeah, why was I? That's, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I mean. So, yes, that is what you were saying <laughs> as well. Um, But I was going to say, I'm glad you explained that because I didn't know how to put into words, which is why I was rushing to ask you the question first. It's the same thing as, like, you know, a lot of times we do accomplish these things. We put so much stock into it, and you get in, and it's like, huh. That's not quite what I thought. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I said, horrible is a very aggressive word for that. But you it's like kind of like disappointing and things like that, like yeah. places you wanted to go, and some you know sometimes it's trash. And like man, that was that's a, that feels terrible for me. Like when I want to go to a restaurant, I've been on their gram, seen the menu, and then you go and you're like trash. Man. Yeah, not that awesome. Man, also that's probably the worst thing is when you spend money on foods you think is gonna be great and it's mm-hmm. not. That's probably one of the most Biggest disappointing ways. things of time and money and I just don't finish the meal and it's not worth the calories. It's a whole thing. <laughs> um, so that's probably, I would say horrible, but I agree with the, I would agree with Alexia on putting your intention and energy into the journey and enjoying that piece. Cause you have a lot more of those days than you do on mountain peaks. For so. you, is there a thing though, like a more specific thing that you thought was going to be so awesome and it wasn't? No, not that I can think of off, off top, but that I've had that experience that roller coaster is like going to be a thing. Uh, maybe actually uh, taking it way back like when our previous relationships we had like taking a break and I was like oh it's gonna be so great when it comes back and it was not great <laughs> mm-hmm. um, like I just knew that that was gonna be the thing it was gonna be awesome he was my person no none of that worked out He's a, he is a great person but we're not yeah. going to be together yeah and sometimes the break is like oh, okay this is just our way of acting like we're about to do something but then you know depends on how you use that break if nobody's changing or working on anything it's like it's okay to just call it yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Um, but hit us. Let us know what you're waiting on, what, you're, what steps you're going to take to move forward and stop action faking. Um, and then also, if you want to answer the question, let us know um, what's something you thought was going to be amazing and then it just turned out that it wasn't. Beautiful. I like that. Thank you, Carly. Thank you, me. Thank you, listeners. Thanks to your hair person. <laughs> right. Shout out. No, I ain't going to shout her out because I ain't want y'all to go to her. But I, def- <laughs> I definitely flew five hours to go get my hair color, so <laughs> somebody listening might be out there. But if you want to know, you can hit me up and ask me. How about that? Peace out. Bye, y'all.